I think if you're really in it for the long term, cash is crazy uh, because you're losing a ton of dough. You're losing 2% and you've also got opportunity loss. And Hello and welcome to Pillars of Wealth Creation, where we talk about creating financial success with a special focus on business and real estate. I'm your host, Todd Dexheimer. Now, let's get to it. Hello, welcome back to Pillars of Wealth Creation. I'm your host, Todd Dexheimer. With me today, as always, we got Matt Jones. Matt, how are you doing today, man? I'm doing great. Staying cool in the heat of summer. Yeah, yeah. How was your uh, Independence Day weekend? Any, anything exciting, fun? No, wild. Did you blow your fingers off with fireworks? What'd you do? No, I mean, we watched uh, some fireworks just from the house, but uh, did some grilling out, but it was mostly low key at home. Yeah, cool, cool. Yeah, we went, uh, we did some camping. Uh, our first time out this year, which is crazy, it's already 4th of July. Usually we have like two or three trips by then, by now, but uh, we didn't plan anything, I guess. In, in, in advance so anyway this was our first time but we spent most of the time on a lake because it was warm it was toasty my kids did a lot of water skiing did a lot of tubing and played in the we played in the water a lot so it was a lot of fun uh, good time to get away good time to reflect a little bit and you know still be thankful for the country we have even though we got crazy times going on you know what i re i looked at a, a facebook post today and they were talking about uh like just kind of reflect back our times aren't that bad actually uh crazy stuff is going on sure but think of the the post was think if you were born in like 1900 right 1914 world war one happened and 22 million people died by the time it was over then right when the war was done 1918 we had the spanish flu and you know a ton of people died there and then we had the great depression and we had the dust bowl and we had and then we had world war ii and 55 million people died and then we had you know the korean war and then uh you know you got vietnam and you've got uh, 60s riots and so it's like oh wow I guess maybe life is pretty good right now, even though right now a lot of people are like, oh, what's happening? Our country is falling apart. I think our country is going to be, uh, I'm optimistic that our country is going to be fine and we're going to be stronger even, you know, with all of this, we're going to come together and be stronger. That's yep. my hope. That's my thought. Um, and so, you know, it's always good to take a little time, reflect and be thankful for what you got. Absolutely. I mean, there's more wealth now than any point in human history. Uh, yeah. You know, middle class people now live better than kings did in the Middle Ages. Uh, certainly so. And, and look, we've got a lot of opportunity in this country to actually be in charge of, of your own really, uh, you know, destiny. And, and I know there's challenges uh, all around us, but I think if you take responsibility for yourself, you take advantage of everything that's available, all the education that's available, all the books, all the amazing, you know, sources that are out there. Um, you can do some great things. And, and I, it, I know it comes from all kinds of different people. I mean, I've interviewed people that, uh, you know, started out in the ghetto. Yeah, you know, in, in cities, certain big cities started on the ghetto. I've interviewed people that have came from other countries with nothing but like a backpack. Um, and they've became amazing, successful business owners. So it's a cool country. I still think. Yep. And uh, we'll get through this and we'll, we'll make it stronger. Yep. I mean, I would say it's harder if you don't have any advantages starting out, but uh, sure, you sure, can still make certainly. it. You absolutely can still make it. Yeah, certainly it's it's easier if you've got a silver spoon uh, handed to you, but it, that also can be challenging because some of those people just think it's like there, right? So they don't try hard. They don't they don't see the need to work hard at it, and so they actually ruin the opportunity, even though they are given basically what they could accomplish on a silver platter. They wreck that opportunity because you know, they take the lazy way out. Um, so yeah, it, it certainly takes a different mindset it, depending on who you are and what you came from, but it can be done. Yep. Right and now. That's not what we're talking about though today, right? Well, you're going to say something. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, uh, I was going to segue into the topic. Uh, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Let's do it. 
All right, so here's my segue. Uh, I was just saying that uh, right now with COVID going on, people aren't really traveling, people aren't spending money. So yeah. there's a lot more money in savings and uh, bank accounts right now than usual. So what should people do with their excess cash if they have it? Well, yeah, and a lot of people, some, you know, there, there's obviously some people have like no money and they're going, ah, what am I going to do? You know, COVID's going on and the economy's potentially going to crap and I got no money and I got no savings and ah. But then there's a lot of other people that are like, hey, I got so much freaking money. I don't even know what to do with it right now. And I don't want to invest in the stock market because look at how volatile it is. It's just weird. Like why it doesn't even make any sense. And people are going, ah, nah, real estate. You know, ah, I'm not so sure if I want to do real estate because I, you know, man, it's, it's strong right now. And, but retail, ugh, you know, office, girls, you know, whatever, uh, multifamily oh, looks good, but is this fake? Like, so I think a lot of people are going, I don't know what I want to do. And so should I just hold all my money in cash? And that's kind of where we want to talk about, like, is cash the best place for your money? And I think a lot of it comes down to who you are, right? If you're 75 years old and you know, you're going to, you need to access that money and you can't lose it. Well, and cash might be an okay place. It's going to lose 2% a year, right? Because of inflation, but maybe having a bigger chunk in cash is okay. But if you're like me, if you're like you and you're in your, you know, even I'm not in my twenties, but if you're in your twenties, if you're in your thirties, uh, even if you're in your forties or fifties, uh, you might be in a different spot where you can actually take and potentially lose a little bit of that money. Or, you know, we look at real estate, we look at stock market and it's pretty, pretty clear that the majority of the time it goes up in value, right? It goes up with or higher than inflation. And that's kind of, if we look back at history, kind of how it is, right? We, we see, you know, in the stock market, we might see, you know, 18% gain one year and a 12% loss the next year. And then a 16% gain for the next three years. And, but overall, we know that the stock market increases between six and 8%, right? Real estate's pretty similar. We might see, you know, it's not volatile like that, but we might see a gain of 7%, 7 to 10% for five years or 10 years or 15 years. And then all of a sudden we see a loss of, uh, you know, five to 10% for two or three years. But we know overall the trend is so upwards. And same thing with, with precious metals and all that kind of stuff. So I think if you're really in it for the long term, cash is crazy. Uh, because you're losing a ton of dough. You're losing 2% and you've also got opportunity loss. And that opportunity loss is, you know, even if you're going precious metals, if you're, you know, trying to be conservative, you should be able to make easily, you know, 5% a year um, if you're playing the long game. So it really comes down to what you're trying to accomplish. I think that's the biggest thing you've got to look at. And, and some cash is good, right? We, we want some liquidity. It might not be cash. It might, maybe you're putting it in a money market account where it can make, you know, 1% interest or something like that. Um, but, but some of that money it, freely accessible is still good. But I would say, you know, that's, that should be like your six months worth of reserves type of thing. Yep. So if you're trying to build up, then, you know, stuff in your cash under your mattress is not going to help you at all. Yeah. Even if you're trying to be conservative, like, look, I think, I think holding an excessive amount of cash, even if you're trying to be conservative, even if you're trying to play the market, even if, you know, if you're trying to time things, I think that is actually the riskiest thing you can do. That's the worst thing is, is in action. If you're going, look, I think the real estate market, Look, I'm talking to predominantly real estate people, right? And so if you're going, hey, the real estate market, I'm a little nervous about it. We've got this funny money that's been flying around and, and I don't know if the tenants are going to continue to pay rent. And I think, you know, I saw a report uh, that says we could have 10% vacancies and we're going to have some economic vacancy on top of that. And so I'm a little nervous. I think prices are going to come down. Okay, so maybe you don't want to dump all your money into... Um, 
into real estate right now, well, why don't you put it into some precious metals, right? To where we can access it fairly quickly, maybe not the second we want to, but pretty much, right? So we can put our money into precious metals, keep it in there, hopefully get the gains that precious metals are going to get. And then when we're ready to buy real estate, we can buy the real estate, right? But letting it just sit there on the sidelines makes no sense. And we also don't know, like one of the things, and this is a mistake I made, Matt, is back in about 2015, I think it was, maybe quite frankly, it was earlier than that. It was probably like 2013, 2012. And I was looking at the market and analyzed the market. And I said, multifamily just didn't crash the way I would have expected multifamily to crash because of everything that's going on. And all these loans are kind of coming due. People that bought in, you know, 2005, 2006, 2007, they bought this multifamily for crazy prices. They're going to be foreclosed on, right? Because their vacancies are higher and the, the rents aren't that great. And so the banks aren't going to, maybe they're not going to get foreclosed on, but the banks are going to renew. And so these people are being forced to sell. So I thought, you know, so in my mind, I justified everything that was going on. My theory was, and so I was like, hey, I'm going to wait to buy multifamily. I'm not going to buy this 20 unit, 40 unit, 60 unit, because, you know, it's, I'm going to be able to buy it for 30, 40% discount. And that never happened, right? It just continued to go up. My theory was sound, at least in my head, right? We all have theories that are sound in our heads. Um, but different things happened. And I held on to that theory actually for a long time. I felt like multifamily, oh, it's, it's still going to come. Like it's going to come because I had this theory and I was right, right, right? I, I'm a smart person. I was right. Well, it, it never happened. And still, could it happen, right? Sure, it could happen still, right? But what, what would have happened if I ignored that theory, that random theory that didn't play into the facts of today and actually bought that real estate that I wanted to buy, but made myself fearful to buy, right? I would have been able to buy these properties, watch them increase in value. And so don't let fear hold you back either when you're sitting there going, ah, I don't want to place my money because I don't know what's going to happen to the real estate. Well, we don't know. But what we do know is that it always goes up in value eventually, right? If you bought at the high of 2008 and you bought conservatively enough, or so high of 2006, whenever it was, uh, if you bought conservatively enough to make it through the low, you're doing really good today, right? You're, you're not feeling bad about buying it at the high. You're feeling really good that you bought that real estate because you cash flowed throughout the time. You maybe had a couple of rough years. You had four rough years, but you made it through and you had some really, really, really good years. And now your real estate's valued, you know, 30, 40, 50% higher than when you bought it and you've paid down your mortgage and you're looking good, right? So maybe you're going, I don't want to put my cash in this, but maybe you should rethink that and put some of the cash into real estate, maybe hold some back. That's fine. Put into other assets to, if you're wanting to wait for this potential crash, but right now it's just potential. We don't, we don't know. Right. And has multifamily ever really crashed uh, oh, that yeah, hard? Absolutely. Yeah, it has and a lot of people. And that's a great question, Matt, because a lot of people don't think that it has, they go, Oh, We'll look back at 2006 and that was the high in 2008, you know, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, when we had this big single family recession, multifamily had less than 1% foreclosure rate and you know, things were really good and solid. That's true, right? 2000, uh, you know, one bubble, like it didn't get smacked around at all, but what happened? Back in the, uh, um, uh, what do you, what do you, I'm trying to think of the, the right word, but in the eighties, when we had the, um, the insurance, um, I can't think of the name, but anyways, uh, multifamily absolutely got decimated. And so yeah, it can, yes. Is it a resilient, 
A very resilient uh, investment? Absolutely. So does it get crushed very often? No. But is it completely insulated? No, it's not. So could it? Sure, it could. But again, we buy based on the risk that's involved. And we buy knowing what's going on with the asset. And we have to buy knowing we could potentially lose that money. And if you're not willing to do that, well, then you're not going to be in the game. You shouldn't be in the game. Entrepreneurship, investment, that takes risk. I don't care who you are, that takes risk. If you're going to do a startup, Matt, I mean, there's nothing really more risky, right, than a startup company. And But you have massive rewards and you do it with a certain degree of conservative nature. You do it with preparedness, right? You get educated and then you go and you know the biggest risk takers with the right education, with the, the right business plan are going to get the biggest rewards. That way the, the risk is somewhat managed at least. Yeah, you got to manage your risk. You can't be an idiot and just go out there and buy anything just because somebody told you that real estate's great. You just, like that's, that's just stupid, right? That's not taking a risk. That's just being stupid. Um, but we still have to take risk. We still have to, um, you know, ready, fire, aim. Yep. I myself, I, I don't like going to casinos very much. I'm not much of a gambler, but I do like right. real estate. Even though it is a gamble, it's one where the cards are stacked in my favor. Yeah, yeah, and I wouldn't even maybe go as far as, as being a gamble, um, but yeah, the cards are definitely stacked in your favor as long as, you know, you educate yourself, and, and, and that obviously you do. I mean, you're writing a book about real estate. So, yeah, cash. Anyway, so back to, back to kind of our, our original thought or my original thought in, in what we're talking about is, is cash is Cash is king. Cash is great, right? We want to have cash. We want to have liquidity, but we also need to make sure we're taking care of our cash because it erodes quickly, 2% negative uh, every single year. And, and I quite frankly think probably potentially a lot faster depending on what happens here with all the money that has came into the market. We could see a bit more of inflation. We've got to keep our money working for us. If we can, if we're losing 10 or 2% and we can, even get into a conservative investment that's making 2%. But now we've got a 4% gain versus having it in cash. Well, I guess we get 2% gain because inflation, but, um, but, but still, I mean, it doesn't make sense to have it sit there. It just doesn't. Yep. Makes sense to me too. Well, Matt, anything else? No, not on today. The topic? Okay, man. Well, Let's uh, let's chat next week. We'll bring something exciting to the table, I think. Yep, we'll be talking more about the uh, North Star Real Estate Conference. It'll be coming up in October. Yeah, there you go. We got we got, actually got some some good speakers, so maybe we'll we'll hold that next week. We'll talk about a couple of the speakers that we've got coming. I'm excited about the the conference and some of the speakers. So it'll be fun. Talk to you soon, Matt. You have a fantastic rest of the day. Make every day Saturday, man. Hey, thanks so much for listening. I appreciate you being a loyal listener. Say, I would love to have you go on to our Facebook page and subscribe. Uh, give us a thumbs up. Go on to iTunes or wherever you listen and give us a rating and review. Don't forget to subscribe. But your rating and review just helps us push this out to more and more people and continue to grow our audience and hopefully positively affect a ton of people out there that really need this and, and want this. So uh, the other thing I've got for you is a free ebook on my website. So go on to venturedproperties.com, venturedproperties.com and download our free ebook uh, on real estate and on syndication. And I've got some data points in there, some really good stuff for you. So I'd love to have you take a look at that. It's free. I'm not expecting anything from it. Uh, and, and also, look, if you want some help in multifamily, want some help learning, growing, getting your business off the ground, I would love to talk to you about what it would look like uh, to work with me potentially and see if that's a good fit. So you can go up to coachwithdex.com and check that out and uh, we can definitely have a, uh, a call. Thanks a lot for listening. You make 
it a fantastic rest of the day. I'll catch you on the next episode.